Um, but it's really easy. Oh, no. Okay, so if you're just tuning in on YouTube, uh, I switched tabs really quick and it messed up when I went live. Um, so I'm going to go through that intro one more time for our YouTube audience. <laughs> uh, today I'm tackling lesson five of Draw a Box, and we are drawing uh, some not pandas. So we're drawing a red panda and a trash panda. First up is the red panda, and I am just indicating where the side of this ball is. This is the back of the ball. That's where the tail will attach. And this wrapping line goes around. Now that's really messy. Oh man. But uh, whenever I'm constructing like this, I really don't mind if it gets a little messy because uh, I am gonna reduce the opacity of the layer. Um, but yeah, if you wanna buy me a coffee, subscribe to uh, my other social media channels or my newsletter, make sure you visit joshj.blog forward slash links. Oh, yeah. All right. Wow. Yeah, so YouTube's missing like uh, four minutes of this. <laughs> All right, back to it. Sort of an egg for our rib cage. We can see that it's twisting. Now I'm gonna draw this gesture line for the tail. So I'm, I'm imagining that it's coming straight through. Those are a little dark. So let's. That looks about right. Nice big C curve here. Well, S curve. All right, that will work nicely. So if it attaches right there, red pandas have these huge, super fluffy tails, and rather than try to draw just the appendage without the fur. I'm going to go ahead and just imagine that it's all a solid mass for the tail. Get rid of some of my construction here. All right. So now I really want to give the the main body a bit more form. The more you look at a red panda, the more you realize they're just built like cats with extra fluffy tails. All right. So uh, there's a lot of fur on the, the red panda that I'm looking at, and it adds a whole lot of bulk to the drawing. So I'm trying to imagine the body underneath it right now. Um, but I probably am drawing these forms a little bigger than they actually are, just, just based on how super fluffy they are. And I'm, I'm actually not familiar with red panda anatomy. <laughs> I don't think many, many of us are. So I am uh, guesstimating here. Let's see. Neck attaching. Alright, now imagining this wrapping around, I'd say that shoulder on the other side attaches somewhere around here. I'm drawing through the object again, just so that I can understand in perspective. It's like, alright, well, if this is where the shoulder attaches on this side of the body, it would attach probably right here on the other side. And I'm trying to imagine sort of a, a simple gesture line coming all the way through. And that's, that's about what I think the muscle and skeleton on the other side would look like. So there's, 
There's like a log that the, the panda's standing on here. And now I want to get to work on the back legs. So I am looking at the side of the ball and I'm drawing through this tail. Um, Again, trying to understand the perspective. That's a that's a pretty good approximation of what I think those back legs are doing. Now let's let's construct the head. All right. Uh, so let's start with an eye line. And we're not at a three quarter, but we're not at a straight profile either. So I want to imagine a center line like that on the cranial mass that looks pretty close ah. all right there we go and then we have like a the the muzzle I'm drawing all as one big shape first and it sort of attaches and wraps around the front, it's like a chopped off cone, almost. And then we can start carving into this muzzle shape that I drew to make room for the, the eyes. And we've got sort of a eyebrow shape over the eyes, which I'll draw in on the other side. There we go. And just like the uh, front of the ball here, the muzzle is not at a perfect profile. It's, it's very much a three-quarter view. Well, not very much. And this is very much like a ball. There we go. The mouth is open, so let's show that. How are we looking? Not bad. Not bad at all. And we get these fluffy white patches on the cheeks. And I want to imply that we've got another big fluff ball right here. Now, that red panda looks a little angry, but I'll fix that later. <laughs> All right. So the ears are also like big cones, but they're hollow. go and imagining this wrapping over the ear on the other side would attach like that I'm trying to draw lightly Actually, it looks like I've constructed the red panda pretty well at this point. So that, that's, that's the major construction of a red panda. But now I want to draw in the fur masses. So I am just going to lower the opacity on this to about 75%. A little less than 75%. Now I'm going to get in here and really focus on the panda. Just a second. opacity a little more than that even. Let's drop it down to like 36%. This will let me really get in there and construct the rest of the panda the way I want. Um, which actually brings up an interesting topic. So I was looking at Cora the other day and someone asked the question, how do you develop your style as an artist? And I just, 
it's something that I've actually seen asked a lot, that I've had asked several times, and the answer that I always keep returning, like the, the answer I always return to is, you develop your style as an artist pretty much exactly how you would develop your uh, handwriting. It is done in almost the exact same way. So when you learn your your alphabet, you copy your parents, your teachers. And eventually you learn how to make marks in a way that you really enjoy. This fur mask back here is huge. Alright, there we go. Can imagine that going through there, like so. I've been drawing on my, my small drawing tablet a lot lately, so my uh my hand motions are a little different on this large tablet anymore. I have an ancient Surface Pro that I decided to turn into a like an iPad sketchbook basically and it is awesome like I find it difficult to stop drawing anymore. We're starting to get more of a, a red panda vibe and less of a, an angry cat vibe. So I'm really trying to focus on specific transitions in the fur. I don't want to get in here and do like so much fur detail that it overwhelms the drawing. It's really about uh, basically gesture. If like you, you focus on the, the edges, that's where the texture goes. Um, but you can only focus on the edges once you understand where these big shapes are. So you focus on the overall shape, then the edges. That's a little too much there. That's better. So once you've designed your shapes, you can Put a little bit of texture in it, but not enough to overwhelm the rest of the composition. I don't remember which uh, art teacher mentioned it to me, um, but really the only time you see texture is during transitions from light to dark. Like that's where textures are the strongest. And like mostly in those transitions to dark. So white especially highlights blow out any texture. You can see more in that transition to a shadow. And I always thought that was a, a really, really useful tip. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bands. Very dark. 
nice. So we've got some nice big whiskers. Now these whiskers are white in the uh, reference, but uh, right now I'm, I'm just trying to construct this panda, so I'm not too worried about uh, whether my values are correct. I just want to know that the forms are all constructed well, and that this this panda would make a good well this not panda this red panda would make a good uh, skeleton for a finished piece of art. I'm actually uh, I'm really pleased with it. All right, I need something to drink horribly bad, so I am gonna I'm gonna be right back, everybody. All right, let's get back to it. I think YouTube's yelling at me that not enough video to maintain a smooth streaming experience. All right. Well, I apologize, YouTube. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Hey, thanks for tuning in, Allie. I just got that notification. All right, back on the canvas. Let us. Make some room. We'll, let's see. Actually, that's that's fine. We'll we'll trash panda it up right here. So the trash panda, I'm sorry, raccoon. The raccoon is a little different in in the reference that I'm looking at right now. So I uh, I will probably combine the forms for the torso. So the the hip form and the the rib cage form. I am going to combine into one shape that that sort of makes a little more sense to me. So it's it's actually facing us. Raccoons have a much bigger bottom half than top half. So the the red panda is a little front heavy bulky. The trash panda is very back heavy bulky so i drew a really simple bean shape here with a center line to show that it's twisting away and the top of the the bean is probably right there so that's where the spine would come out and connect to a cranial mass like so raccoons also have very big Uh, hind muscles uh, and the arms up front do a gesture um, the tail probably somewhere 
somewhere like that. I don't think I ever really finished talking about what I was talking about earlier with uh, drawing and handwriting. Um, so yeah, when you're learning how to write, you, you copy people you admire. You copy your parents, you copy your teachers. Eventually you might even, uh, like if you get obsessed with your handwriting, you might look into something like calligraphy and see how, see how that can help your handwriting. I can't see this back leg, but with the perspective, I'm just going to assume it's like somewhere in here. Um, but eventually you develop your own style, and then you modify your own style, and then your your style becomes something that uh, you repeat, and it becomes natural to you. Oh, I should have moved this to its own layer. So I'm going to do that real quick. All right, yeah. Ah. So this back leg is bothering the crap out of me. It that is not how it's actually shaped. Like we have a big we have a, a, a big form coming towards us like this, and then it goes back in space, and I think this foot connects back here somehow. So my gesture was off. Um, I'm glad I decided to take the time to figure that out. It was a fun gesture, but not what I needed for the actual drawing. And yeah, we've got a lot of fur coming in front of it. I, hmm. Big fur shape here. But that's, that's actually the construction of my raccoon already. Um, we've got... ears that attach along this line. The head. The eyes are very close together. Maybe even closer than that. be a little too close. <laughs> One second. I'll measure on the actual raccoon photo. Yes. That's really, really, really close. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this one's a little too far. They're, they're they're a little too close, but not by a lot. So what I measured was the width of the nose here. It is 
just wider than the width of the nose. So what I'm going to do is pull the line up and move them out based on that line. There we go. Um, the width of the nose also determines a lot of the shapes that we get here, like the bandit mask. So it's actually a useful line to have. This is actually helping me construct the nose a little bit better, right. or the muzzle a little bit better. I, I went a little too deep with the muzzle right here. It's got a much shorter rounded form. Let's see, there's a lot of fur coming off of the side of the head over here. So even though the head itself is drawn like a ball, the fur as it comes off of the head turns a raccoon's head into almost a diamond shape. And it might have been useful to draw it that way in the first place. Okay. So let's keep drawing in these fur shapes their front legs uh, have sort of a, a big mass of fur on them right here and then get very stick-like. Looks like this leg is actually going to conveniently get hidden behind a lot of that big fur shape. fur shapes on a new layer like I should have. do that. Lower that opacity just like I did before. And then I can get in here and really focus on <clears throat> building some things out. Let's see what time it is. No, I'm only half an hour in. I'm making really good time this time. Oh, so part of what I'm wanting to talk about today actually is how to balance construction and design. So I think construction is very important. Uh, it's one of the primary skills that you learn through draw a box is how to construct your drawings. But how do you balance construction and a style? It's tricky. <laughs> It's very tricky. Uh, so Steve Houston is one of my, my art heroes. He has a lot to say on style and construction. So 
it's about moving back and forth from gesture to construction because those are opposite ends of the spectrum. Your gesture is the movement, the connection, the flow, and your structure is what holds all of that together. So you have to have both for an effective design as far as balancing it. That's, it's, a, it's a puzzle. It's a real puzzle. <laughs> and it's one that you're going to have to figure out pretty much on your own. Uh, the people I look to the most to understand that are the, the golden age illustrators. Uh, so that would be like JC Lion Decker, love Lion Decker's work. Um, probably one of my biggest heroes. Um, and Norman Rockwell, amazing, amazing work from Rockwell. The, the golden age illustrators knew how to like they had, they had a sense of how to simplify and make structure, but still keep the flow and the gesture in a way that made it, made their art seem like, like the best way I can describe it is, is more real than real. Um, like there was just a, an extreme energy to their drawings that is really hard to replicate. I am having so much fun with this trash panda drawing. <laughs> I made the ears too pointy. Trash pandas have very, I mean, they're pointy, but they're, they're rounded at the tips a lot more than I did. So you'll see me trying to do the same here. Like I'm, I'm adding structure, and then some simple, simple textures to indicate uh, where the textures are. More than I'm trying to make it look real. I want it to. I want it to look solid. But I'm mostly concerned about with uh, the, well, here I'm concerned mostly about the design. Uh, Cynics on YouTube is another person that I, I look up to a lot in terms of uh, designing and simplifying. Uh, he actually goes into a lot of detail about what reductions are and how he thinks about reductions in this little three hatch marks to show direction and fur without overwhelming the viewer. That's, that's straight from Cynic's design. He is a really great teacher. Uh, I highly recommend you check out his work. Okay, so. This is interesting here. The, uh, the tail changes directions. Ah. So, moving away from us, moving away, straight, in the middle of the bend, starting to move towards us. And that's, that's actually all of the detail I'm going to put into uh, the, the, the stripes on the raccoon tail. So animals with stripes, super convenient. <laughs> Bees are another animal that, or, well, animal. They're, they're an insect that's incredibly easy to draw because of their stripes. Sorry, I'm 
make these a little bit darker because they're much thicker than I drew here and I, I, I'd like that to be pretty evident and this one sort of disappears and we get some texture back there um, there was a good way to show this pinch happening here with the overlap so my my original bean shape coming through here this would this would show a nice bold overlap if you could see it uh, you really can't I kind of want to emphasize that a little bit though so I'm gonna make a design decision here to make it look a little more real I also want this leg to very clearly be in front of this one, so I'm going to put a little bit of a bolder edge on that and have it clearly overlapping these. Uh, like one of my last videos I mentioned to Tangents, this shows a clear overlap where this doesn't. This shows no overlap, but this does. So I want to I wanna try to make sure that we get as many intersections as possible instead of shapes that sort of barely nudge up against each other so I'm going to emphasize some of those so just making decisions about these T shapes to make it clear where the overlaps are happening and I, I want a bit more boldness in the front of these, like, or for the front shapes, and I gotta be careful not to just overdo it. <laughs> Sometimes you can even have a broken line to help create depth. Fun, fun. Um, yeah, I, I think we're approaching the end of this this lesson um, it's not a bad looking trash panda so we we got ourselves a red panda oh hold on I see something on the trash panda that needs some work those eyes are nowhere near useful or finished Trash Panda staring into your soul. What about up here? Oh, okay. Let's drop a little highlight on that red panda eye. While we're here, since I've got extra time, I want to go ahead and do the same thing where we help shapes have uh, a clearer priority. All right, and I think I think we're we're done for the day. We've got us uh, a trash panda and a red panda, and that was that was a whole lot of fun. I, I really enjoy drawing um, animals. <laughs> animals are much much nicer to draw than insects, in my opinion. Now insects are a whole lot of fun, but it. it it feels like there's more mechanical accuracy necessary, whereas with animals, you can really get into the gesture of it, uh, birds included. Yeah, 
yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. I think I'm going to continue the animal studies. Maybe do some gesture drawings next time of of people. That that could also be a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thanks for joining me. Oh, uh, fam uh, friendly reminder about the flash event. Uh, if you haven't been tuning in or haven't been following me on Facebook, or if you're not part of my newsletter or the Affinity newsletter, we are doing a flash event next Sunday. Well, this coming up Sunday, uh, January 15th, to benefit the Tri-County Animal Shelter. We're going to sponsor as many animals as possible. Um, we're doing discounted tattoos, uh, a raffle, and for every animal we're able to sponsor and save, we'll be giving away another gift certificate. So every animal we sponsor, one gift certificate. Uh, yeah, yeah, that about covers it, I think. So thanks for, thanks for joining in. If you want to follow everything I do, get updates from uh, me on my newsletter, uh, schedule a consult for a tattoo or an illustration, or buy me a coffee, make sure you visit joshj.blog forward slash links. And yeah, so thanks again. Thanks for tuning in. And I'll be back on Thursday at 9 a.m. And we'll draw something else. Thanks again. Bye.